Welcome back, everyone, for another deep dive. Ready to explore some seriously big questions? I think my brain is ready, are you? Always. Today, we are talking about magnetic fields. And not just any magnetic fields, we're going cosmic. Ah, uh, those invisible forces are everywhere out there, aren't they? They really are. I mean, we see them affecting everything from galaxies to those incredible auroras here on Earth. But when we talk about cosmic magnetic fields, we're talking about something even grander. We're talking about fields that sprawl across mind-boggling distances, reaching far beyond individual galaxies, even extending beyond clusters of galaxies. Imagine a web woven into the very fabric of space, completely invisible to our eyes, but with a huge influence on the cosmos. It's like the universe has its own hidden wiring system, and it's only recently that we've begun to grasp just how extensive and powerful it truly is. Okay, so we know these gigantic magnetic fields are out there. We can observe them, but the million dollar question is, where did they come from? That is the million dollar question, and it's one that has baffled astronomers and physicists for decades. It seems like there's this huge gap in our understanding, this missing piece of the cosmic jigsaw puzzle. You're hitting the nail on the head. The prevailing theory is that these fields were generated way back in the early universe, very close to the Big Bang itself. But there's a catch. There's always a catch. What is it this time? Well, back then, the universe was unbelievably compact, almost unimaginably small and hot. So trying to picture those massive magnetic fields we see today crammed into that tiny space is kind of like... Like trying to stuff a giant elephant into a shoebox just doesn't quite fit, does it? Not at all. So how do we go from these tiny early universe magnetic fields to the enormous ones we observe today? It doesn't seem possible. It is a huge challenge. Even with the universe expanding over billions of years, those initial fields should still be dwarfed by what we observe today. So there's something else going on here, something we're missing. That's where this new research paper comes in, right? You got it. It throws a fascinating curveball into the mix. This paper dares to ask, what if axions, those elusive hypothetical particles, actually hold the key to cracking this magnetic mystery. Wait, axions? Those are like the cosmic ghosts that physicists have been chasing after for decades. I think I remember reading about those a while back. The very same. Now keep in mind, they're still theoretical, but they fit very nicely into certain models of how the universe works. Okay, so we've got these theoretical particles, and we've got these massive magnetic fields stretching across the universe. How do they connect? Well, it all hinges on the concept of helical magnetic fields. Picture those fields with a twist, kind of like a corkscrew. Helical fields, so they have a twist to them. Why is that twist so important? That twist, that helical structure, is crucial because it gives these fields a remarkable ability. They can transfer energy over vast distances. Interesting. So are you saying that regular magnetic fields can't do that? Well, they can, but not nearly as effectively. Think of a regular magnetic field like a ripple in a pond. Its energy dissipates or spreads out as it travels, but a helical field, it's more like a tornado. It's energy becoming more concentrated as it grows larger. Wow, that's a powerful image. So is there argument that these helical fields with their energy boosting twist are the key to those supersized magnetic fields we see today? That's the core of their argument. And here's where those enigmatic axions step in. They believe that axions during a specific period in the early universe could have acted like. Well, imagine giving those helical fields a massive energy drink propelling their growth to unimaginable sizes. Hold on, hold on. We're talking about the early universe here. Just how early are we talking about? We're talking about fractions of a second after the Big Bang. The authors focus on a specific period when the universe was incredibly hot and dense, a period where they believe the axion's influence on those magnetic fields would have been most pronounced. That is incredible. So this tiny particle and a blink and you'll miss it moment in the universe's infancy could be the answer to this huge cosmic riddle. It's a pretty wild idea, isn't it? Uh. But remember, in science, the proof is in the pudding, or in this case, the evidence. And this is one thing that makes this paper so compelling, because it doesn't just propose a theory, it goes a step further. The authors lay out very specific characteristics we should observe in intergalactic magnetic fields, characteristics that, if we were to find them, would provide evidence in favor of the axion theory. Okay, now I'm really interested. It's like they're giving astronomers a treasure map, pointing them toward potential evidence. You got it. It's like they're saying, look, if you find helical fields with these specific properties shaped by the way we believe axions interacted with them billions of years ago, you'll have hit the cosmic jackpot. This is so cool. But before we dive into that treasure hunt, 
I think we need to unpack the physics behind all of this just a little bit more. I have to admit, some of this is a little over my head. I agree. To explain how this axion-driven growth might have happened, the paper gets into some advanced physics concepts. But don't worry, we're here to break it down for you. That's what we're here for. Because I have to admit, when I hear modified Ohm's law, my brain does a little happy dance, and not in a good way. Don't worry, we'll take it slow. <laughs> Let's start with the traditional view of the early universe, because to understand what this new paper is proposing, it's helpful to understand what the commonly held view is. Traditionally, the early universe is thought of as this incredibly conductive place. Conductive like a giant copper wire. Exactly, and that conductivity poses a big problem for generating magnetic fields. Imagine trying to create a magnetic field inside a giant copper wire it's really difficult. The high conductivity essentially throws a wrench in the works. It's like trying to build a bonfire in the middle of a rainstorm. The conductivity just makes it so much harder for those magnetic fields to get going. So it's like there's this barrier, this conductivity barrier that makes it really difficult to explain how these magnetic fields in the early universe could have gotten big enough to become what we see today. You've got it. It's one of the biggest puzzles in our understanding of cosmic magnetism. But this paper, it throws a really interesting twist into the mix. Oh, I love a good twist. Tell me more. Well, they suggest that maybe, just maybe, we've been approaching this problem from the wrong angle this whole time. The wrong angle? What do you mean? They introduce this idea of self-induction playing a key role. And it might sound a little intimidating, but bear with me, because I think it makes sense once you wrap your head around it. Imagine a simple electric circuit, like the kind you might have learned about in high school physics. Okay. I vaguely remember those. As the current flows through the circuit, it creates a magnetic field, right? Basic electromagnetism. Now, here's the thing. That magnetic field doesn't just sit there passively. It actually pushes back against the changing current that created it, almost like it's trying to resist the change. So it's like an electromagnetic tug of war going on within the field itself. That's a great way to put it. And it's this pushback, this self-induction, that the paper suggests might have given those magnetic fields the extra oomph they needed to grow, even when the conductivity of the early universe was trying to shut them down. Okay, I think I'm starting to see where they're going with this, but how does this pushback, this self-induction, actually translate into the massive magnetic fields we observe billions of years later? Well, remember Faraday's law. That tells us that a changing magnetic field can create an electric field and vice versa. Vaguely. It's all starting to come back to me now. What this paper proposes is that the self-induction process, that push and pull within the magnetic field, might have actually generated the electric fields needed to keep those magnetic fields growing, even when the overall conductivity was trying to put the brakes on. So self-induction provided a loophole of sorts, a way for those magnetic fields to kind of amplify themselves despite the difficult conditions. It wasn't so much a loophole as a clever workaround. It's like the universe found a way to bypass that conductivity barrier that we thought was so limiting. And this is where those axions we were talking about earlier come in. Right, yeah. This is how they fit into all of this. Exactly. The paper suggests that the way those axions interacted with the electromagnetic field way back in that early period provided the initial spark, that extra little boost of energy that kick-started this whole self-induction process. This is really blowing my mind here. It's like taking all of these established physics principles that we thought we understood and putting them together in a completely new way. It's a perfect example of how science often makes its biggest leaps when people are willing to think outside the box, to question what we think we know, and see if maybe there's a different way of looking at things. Totally. And in this case, it might just lead us to solve one of the biggest mysteries in cosmology. So we've got these axions, we've got helical fields, we've got this self-induction workaround. How does it all come together to explain those magnetic fields that we see stretching across unimaginable distances today? How do we go from those first fractions of a second after the Big Bang all the way to the present day? Well, this is where the paper gets even more interesting. They've actually created a model of how the axion's energy might have evolved over time during those critical early moments. They've even included a graph depicting their calculations, and this is where the rubber really meets the road. A cosmic energy chart. All right, let's break it down. So this graph, it shows how, according to their calculations, that period in the early universe, those fractions of a second right after the Big Bang, could have led to some serious growth in the magnetic field. And not just any kind of growth, we're talking exponential growth, 
particularly at smaller scales. Exponential growth. So like a magnetic explosion, but mm -hmm. on a cosmic scale. That's a great way to picture it. Yeah. Imagine like a tiny seed of a magnetic field suddenly blossoming outward, its tendrils spreading farther and farther. Creating this intricate web of magnetism that we see today. Exactly. It's incredible to think that something that happened in the blink of an eye billions of years ago could still have such a big impact on the universe today. It's mind boggling. It really highlights how interconnected everything in the universe is. These grand structures that we observe today, these magnetic fields stretching across unimaginable distances, they might owe their very existence to the tiniest particles and the shortest of moments. It makes you wonder, what else is out there? What other secrets has the universe hidden away just waiting for us to uncover them? I know. Okay, but before we get too carried away, we do need to remember that this axion theory is still a hypothesis at this point, right? Mm. What kind of research needs to happen next to figure out if this idea holds water? You are absolutely right to pump the brakes a little there. It's still early days. The authors themselves acknowledge that we need a lot more research to confirm or refute their theory. What they're really calling for is more in-depth study of those intergalactic magnetic fields. Right, those magnetic fields spanning the vast distances between galaxies. Exactly. Specifically, they're hoping astronomers can get a better look at the characteristics of these fields. Oh, right. They're looking for those unique characteristics we talked about earlier, those telltale signs of axion activity. You got it. Yeah. Those specific properties, those features that would indicate that axions did, in fact, influence these magnetic fields billions of years ago. Those are the clues we need to find. It's like searching for a cosmic fingerprint left behind by the axion. Precisely. And it's not going to be easy. We're mm. talking about trying to study some of the faintest, most distant objects in the universe. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack, but the haystack is the entire universe. A pretty good analogy. But hey, that's what makes science so exciting. If it were easy, everyone would do it, right? And, you know, if we do manage to find that evidence, those telltale signs, it would completely revolutionize our understanding of the universe. What a thought. Well, listeners, I think it's safe to say this deep dive has taken us on quite a journey. From the tiniest of particles to the largest structures in the universe, we've covered it all today. We have. And this new research, it's a great example of how much more there is to learn about our universe, how many mysteries are still out there waiting to be solved. And that's what makes it so exciting to study. Absolutely. Every new discovery opens up a whole new world of possibilities and pushes us to ask even bigger and bolder questions. We've covered a lot of ground today, so if you're still with us, we applaud you. It's been a wild ride. But, as always, we want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this axion theory? Do you think these elusive particles could be the missing link to understanding cosmic magnetism? Let us know. You can find us on all the usual social media platforms. And in the meantime, keep looking up at the stars and never stop asking questions. Because who knows what incredible discoveries await us in the vast expanse of the cosmos.